information coming in, it didn't really fill the shoes that needed to be filled in a sense. Medios' shot calling, he says, has kind of been a thing that he's not so sure of himself. So with those repaired, Cloud9 could definitely come back riding into the horizon for their fans. We'll see, though. It's been a tough, tough road. Impulse as well, four and five coming into the season so far. Struggling to find the way to get back in, saying the break really put them back, and they haven't been able to get that mojo going. All right, so Rumble's still on the board here yep. for Cloud9. Alistar is also still available, very high priority pick, and one of the two uh, Cinder Hulk early ganking junglers have been banned in Rek'Sai. So Gragas, mm -hmm. Alistar, as well as Rumble, pretty high priority in this matchup versus Cloud9. It looks like Impulse willing to give the champion over to Cloud9 or willing to first pick it yep. for Impact. Echo last ban. Causing Cloud9 to wonder a little bit. What is a bigger priority? And it is taking away that Gragas. Making sure they don't get a first pick. So the junglers do get bans in this game. Something we hadn't seen in the last two. You see what teams begin to favor here. The alley does, however, get picked up. A real priority pick that the teams have been going after and banning quite a bit. Cloud9 to decide now. Supports have been shown. What is Balls' is pretty much first pick here? I mean, he's looking at 17 and 0 in North jumper. American LCS on Rumble. Yeah. Uh, so that's. Impact That's always a quite good a few pick plays. for Cloud9. Uh, but yeah, the Alistar, definitely nobody going to argue with that first pickup. Man, we've heard Zion Spartan say, I will not make the mistake again of giving balls rumble. <laughs> I would never do it. Never going to happen. Is, Impact is not Zion. He's not Zion. Uh, that's for damn sure. And the Alistar, I feel like that's really just too hard for Impulse to pass up because they love going for tower dives. They yeah. love going for those early that moves and hard initiation. Alistar brings everything to Team Impulse. They can also combo with Sivir. So yeah. Cloud9, if they're, you know, this Team Impulse team, they're looking to prep against it. Two of the biggest picks for Team Impulse are Alistar and Sivir. Yeah. And yeah, they've Sivir both gone call. through this pick bans, while as Medios has opted for the early Nocturne, which is technically a takeaway from Very much Rush. So. However, Rush was Nocturne ulting in onto supports a lot yesterday, so. I say it's either the Lee or the Evelyn for him, and to give up the Sivir here would be a little crazy. I'm sure Sneaky would love to take that away. It's almost a prerequisite here for Team Impulse's composition. So, thinking it might just be that Sivir. So, the thing is, Nocturne is actually quite good against Sivir. Yeah. Because um, he can ult in on her, and even if the spell shield's there, you all you really have to do is keep up speed with your trail from mm -hmm. the Dustbringer, and you can almost match Sivir's speed. You can almost keep up with her. I, I'm very interested to see what type of smite Meteos takes as well. Um, for his diving in onto Sivir, because they're very much expecting this from Team Impulse. In Team Impulse, as we said, very clear play style. These yeah. three picks <laughs> are quintessential Impulse picks. This is Rush on his Lee Sin as well, so they are just tripling down on that uh, early high tempo style. Get a seventh play of Sivir in there in the nine games so far. Now 10 coming out of Team Impulse. What does Cloud9 have? Nocturne definitely been seeing a bit of resurgence here as teams continue to ban out the top junglers. And Echo is there in there as well now, considering Medios to play that. Definitely still have the Kog'Maw for Incarnation. Can stay on the back line this game, but already have a bit of AP. Does he go Jace? Keep poking the team here. What can they decide? Or what will they decide, I should say? They make it easy. They let Incarnation round out the composition with last pick as it comes back around in the Jinx. Annie, actually a lot of Kaboom there coming in for the team fights. Yeah, with so they do power. have the combo of fire and fire, yeah. which is the Annie and Rumble, <laughs> which is a pretty uh, big tool for mid-game team fights. However, Annie does uh, sometimes have a problem with Alistar uh, when you transition to the team fight phase. Mm -hmm. um, Alistar's pretty good at trying to zone her out and nullify the Flash Tibbers, um, headbutting her away, being able to ult out of her stun and tank in front of her, um, especially when sped up by Sivir. So uh, Lemonation is going to have his work cut out for him to try and get into a good position yep. for his flash stun. Um, but he could take focus off of Impulse rushing towards Sneaky. The lock-in of Sneaky on Jinx as well. No dash on that AD carry. Always a bit worrisome versus Team Impulse who like to 
charge the back line and dive you. But uh, sneaky confident in his positioning to pull it off. Oh. More Oriana. I'm enjoying this second day of week what five. What a setup there, e easily too. A point and click delivery yeah. for the Oriana ball. Especially with a jinx now, that's going to be tough for Sneaky. Yeah, uh, looks pretty scary. They do have the darkness to work with. They can. That's a good point. You know, cover the work with the cover of darkness for uh, their mid game fight, and try to hope that they can cut off Team Impulse because if they have poor communication mm -hmm. and you knock turn old then you can really pull apart a team. Even, yep. this is what a lot of teams uh, would do against TSM way back in when they were in their prime and uh, had control over all of North America. Sometimes Reginald would get, um, go for initiations and if you had Nocturne on your team, you could cut off the rest of TSM yep. and they would uh, fall apart and be disorganized. But if Team Impulse, all they're saying is go forward, go forward, go forward, then yeah. they're still just going to go the same direction. I do. Because of that, I actually like that last Victor pick coming in from Cloud9. See the plays here. Gravity in Week 2, and he did play it against TDK yesterday. So Incarnation feeling good on Gravity. He's got three members, a Maokai, a Lee Sin, and an Alistar that could be jumping on him. Very easy members to Chaos Storm in that balled-up situation. Bit of a disengaged defensive play there with that Victor. Hopefully they can turn it into some offense throughout the game as well. Now Cloud9 would like to start getting those wins in as it's been Ooh, a hurtful, hurtful would season they ever. in that record book for them. Four and five for Team Impulse. And it's time to start flooding Twitter with your game predictions. As always, send your picks with either hashtag TIP win or hashtag C9win to at LOL Esports. We'll make sure we tally those up throughout the game. Team Impulse did get their Sivir. They have the composition pretty much that they want as long as they get that. We'll see if Cloud9 got what they want. Balsher did. He got his rumble in the top lane. All right, we'll see if he can make it 18 and zero North American LCS all time. That'd be crazy. On that champion. Pretty crazy. I wasn't, wasn't Fakers LeBlanc somewhere around 16, 17, 18? I think it was 16 before he played it against uh, Pawn in the mid lane against the Morgana at MSI. I wonder what the longest record is for that in professional play. And Apollo, speaking ring. of the side of Impulse, puts a lot of blame for Sneaky's recent lackluster games on the rest of Cloud9. So I think Sneaky right now definitely is a above average AD carry, but yeah, his team is holding him back a bit. Um, it's hard for an AD carry right now to make a huge impact in the game. It's, it has to do with like playing as a team, like your jungle, mid, top, everything. So it's, yeah, it just, once their team starts to do well, you'll see him shine a lot more. 30 seconds until spawn. Yeah, Sneaky has been assistant player for Cloud9 for a long time. Gonna be very difficult on Jinx. Versus uh, Sivir boosted. Yeah. Alistar Maokai looking for the back line. This is like you went to the menu of difficulty and you selected just above the hard. It's like normal, hard, just above hard. Well, at least at least there's no Nocturne on the other team. <laughs> That's true. Get half a screen away with the point and click. He'll have his work cut out for him this game. You can see Balls Rumble stats there. 86% kill yeah. participation on top of it as well. He likes light people on fire. All right. Well, deep boards there for Cloud9. It's got the lane swap. Looks like Ooh. they're going for the strong side invade as well. So strong side start for Impulse, yep. whereas it's a strong side invade from Cloud9. Um, and they should be able to split uh, jungle quadrants here. Ability Tome start from Balls as well here. So Flamespit are going to help to crush through the jungle yeah. with his potions. Get to a fast haunting guys for himself. Clear quicker. Yep. So, may have another bit of a slow early game. Well, Jungler's kind of hanging out here. So, the dual lane, nobody was up there to group up the minions, so they're not going to try and top, freeze. Right. They're going to try and push. Uh, they did the Gromp instead. Oh, wow, it just Already it froze for themselves. It froze without them even being there. And they will be able to keep it there if they so choose. Just going to split jungle yep. across the map here. Uh, for both teams. Everybody pretty much dead even here as far as the clear speed goes so far. Also some early roam here from Alistar as Adrian looks to join the duo in a gank attempt rather than oh. sitting in lane and leeching more experience. This looks like it could work out very well. The flash coming in perfectly from Incarnation. 
That's worth for him. Yep. But then maybe rinse and repeat for Impulse to come back. Splitting that combo, able to flash right as the headbutt goes in. And they're able to remove a lot of that threat from the Alistar. But again, Victor, no dash for himself. Now, no, no uh, flash. Has to be very, very careful incarnation in this yeah. matchup. Especially just against Xiao Wei Xiao himself, bringing Ignite to the mid lane. Sometimes you see barrier for Orianas or something else as well, but he has that kill pressure on Incarnation. It comes down to it with the heal. Ali once again. Oh boy, it looks like they just want everything under the turret here. You can see Xiao Wei Xiao pushing huh. the lane in as hard as possible. I feel like Incarnation has to know something's going on. Xiao Wei not giving any aggression up on this one. They go right for him. Rush is the first one to tank it, and they do it very nicely. Taking I, down Incarnation. I like the adaptation. Because you get reduced value of sending your other champions to attack a turret this early in the game, there's reduced damage taken from champions. They instead go for the first blood money off of middle before then having the extra time to head bottom or secure Jagan right now. Pretty much Impulse yeah. have their pick of the litter right now of what objectives they want to go for. Apollo by himself also got solo experience due to committing everyone to mid instead. So he's got the experience boost when they do me back up with Sneaky. As well as that first blood money going over to impact on Maokai. So the other side of the lane swap when they meet back up. He'll have some extra cash to work with. The fact that that happening is pretty rare too. Usually you see a team say, all right, we'll come back in a bit. They literally went back to the same spot and did it as quick as possible. Impulse knowing where they can get their advantages, and they might even start to pressure even harder down towards this mid lane. We'll see where Adrian goes. He's not going towards the bot lane just yet. He's ready to roam still, so they may try to get more ganks on these lanes. At least wards to come out. We see Medios farming up his Raptors. Should be good to come back with his item. Yep, Nocturne very happy with an evenly split lane swap a scenario. Uh, yes, Cloud9 would have liked to avoid the <laughs> action mid, mm -hmm. but getting Nocturne to level 6 as soon as possible is always the goal, as well as avoiding the uh, early aggression of Lee Sin. Didn't work out for them, though. The early aggression still came in from Team Impulse. They were still able to find their mark. Let's see what they can do with it, though. Uh, Lee Sin, uh, Rush, and, Rush and Impact have been yeah. able to combine for some very strong early plays. This ward, though, from Balls should keep him safe, and he can try to waste some time. Yeah, rush. nicely done. I don't know about waste, though. Took a 200 damage about in that combo. Could be a way back. They ping the tri brush, and that ward died on the top side, so they may be able to come back themselves. But they are just saying keep an eye on the tri brush to make sure they don't try to come down here. Gonna gank themselves. Medios is still on the bottom side of his jungle, though, so nothing will come of that. Xiao Wei Xiao is also free of pressure here, but they get knowledge of Medios. So a lot of little things happening here the teams may be able to work off of. It looks like everybody's content with just keeping the farm as is. Yeah, Medios, uh, not only did he get a couple of lane minions, but he's also to mm -hmm. sneak away a camp there, uh, steal it from out from under Rush, uh, increasing the CS advantage that he has over Rush. Comes up, he does have the Raptor buff as well, so he knows wow. there's no ward there, but sees the Sapling Throne. That's the thing, right? He just went through mid lane, whether or not Impact knew that from the call. He just kind of said, you know, maybe 15, 20 seconds, I'm going to Sapling this top brush. Hey, look, I found a Medios. So, again, what I was talking about last game, where mm -hmm. you see your, your Raids are counter jungled, you've got to assume there's a ward in there as well, and Medios has left one in that Raid bush, so... Uh, Rush can work around the knowledge that they have seen him enter this side of the map. They do have a pink ward on bottom, but difficult to pull that dive off yeah. unless they call in a teleport as well. It is something that we have seen, though. The jungler bringing a ward with them for an early gank uh, to have a teleport assist assisted gank from the top laner. Impulse, though, take down the turret, shove up so that they can just get a dragon. The advantages of uh, yeah. being on the bottom side of the lane swap. Very nicely done. May even try to go for a quick gank here in the bot as well. On the hunt is up for Sivir. And it looks like we're going to get Sneaky Q back off already. You can see the first dragon timers for these teams. Really not kind of matching what's on the stats. But they go for it early. If Impulse can do it, they will try. 
video is just hard farming. Trying to get to that level six off of the red camp. Probably will get close and one more. At that point, mm -hmm. what lane does he even go for though? Try and punish this bottom lane that's extending really far into the jungle. Actually, Impulse are getting their recall off because they don't have the deep wards to back it up. Good call there from Impulse as their bottom lane recalls just as Midos does hit that six mark. Carnation double summoners back up as well, so. A play on mid, though, is always fairly risky versus Orianna because Nocturne commits all the way in, and she can easily take off the spell shield before getting a shockwave off, so if Xiao Wei Xiao gets back to his turret, yeah. uh, you have to be very careful uh, about a turnaround gank there. You have to know where Rush is before you go for one of these early moves. First uh, ultimate from Nocturne does determine a lot of his snowball potential for the rest of the game. Yeah, and Medios has actually farmed himself up pretty well, something we've been seeing him do the past few weeks. Oh no, he's going Cinder Hulk. They're not a damage farm. Nocturne. No. They do have a damage lease. Plenty of other sources of damage for uh, for the Cloud9 squad, though, so they do want a tank. Uh, the only thing is that Nocturne doesn't really have any innate scaling with health. He's just trying to get to be a Strong body on the front line. Was it last season or two seasons ago? Towards the end, he played that tank. But yeah, he's played it. He's played it both ways. Nocturne. He's played it full damage. He's <laughs> like played it tank before as well. Um, we have seen it. It was also used in China as tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. Also, also damage there too. So both ways in this team comp, though. You're right, though. There is a lot of damage to come in for these fights. Yeah, they've got. Uh, Plenty of other sources won't be a problem for them. Should be seeing one of those quite soon. See what pans out here towards the top lane. Maybe at least a 2v2 between the junglers. Slowly moving on the mini map as Incarnation and Xiao Wei Xiao continue to push, push each other in with the blue buff. Top lane fizzles out. Just a bunch of warden coming from the junglers to keep everybody safe. Medios back down to mid. Level 6 for him and level 6 for Rush as well. So making sure everybody's matched up here. They, they really want to make this... Uh, Flash play here. Elimination level six wants to get the stun mm -hmm. to start it all off. Oh boy. Great flash by Shao Wei Shao. They still want it. Right under the turret. And that's because the rocket was the follow up over the shoulder of his teammates. They get the kill into Shao Wei Shao. There's your Cloud9 coordination for you. Everybody mid with the ultimates. Lemonation sets it up. The stun lands even as the flash uh, gets right. pulled off. So even though he got the flash off under turret, Midos commits to it and the rocket straight down the middle. Since it was a straight line flash, still hits. That's the thing. Everybody uh, will flash in straight lines unless they train themselves yeah. to flash <laughs> Perpendicular, at an, at perpendicular an to any skill shot. It's Plus, there was no way he could see that coming. Sneaky was sitting in the middle between their own. That's true. They were all at a really here, good so range. He was out of vision. The rocket had time to speed up. This is like a gank like this is also reminiscent of Cloud9 setting up a gank that kind of if the first part fails or kind of misaligns, there's still something else that's going to follow up. They're yeah. sure that it's going to work in some way or another in their advantage. That Nobody would be goes. heartbreaking for the team. If that was turned around, if, <laughs> if Xiao Xiao lived uh, from that, they committed yeah. everything. The Flash Nocturne Ultimate right. used the Flash Ult from uh, Elimination as well. So Cloud9, though, uh, their precision play pays off when they get that kill. Not for blood money, but a kill nonetheless back for them. I always like to think it works once, though, right? Now he's aware Xiao Wei Xiao is not going to let it happen again. Where can Cloud9 do it next? Oh, Impulse. here's that combo, though. Impulse had their way with Incarnation in mid, so they go to the top side now, trying to shut down the 17-0 balls. He's bringing out some damage, but not enough with the Haunting guys just finished up. And he goes down to Rush, making plays on his Lee Sin this game. Impact and Rush. Mm -hmm. Once again, the Bash Brothers of Team Liquid. Yeah. It's something that worked for him before. Why not go back to it? And they knew, you know, Meteos had used everything in that last game, so. No presence for him up on the top side. Since they have defensive wards up for Team Impulse all across that side of the map, you don't see any entry into the river. And they were very safe with that aggressive play. 
Oh, they're gonna try to hit this one up immediately. The Ignite goes down in the Lemonation. Apollo has enough to kind of just stand through the Tibbers. It was the call for Balls to come in, however, that could change the fight. And I think Impulse has actually calculated this one so everybody can get out. Balls comes off of the overheat, but doesn't have enough speed on Scrap Shield to get back into range. Nicely done by Impulse to thwart Cloud9 there. Yeah, and some mistiming yeah. there. After such great uh, combo in mid lane there, that one was a little bit disjointed mm -hmm. for Cloud9. Turtle had plenty of health there, and the Alistar was able to get in the middle of it. Medios now caught out Ooh. in enemy territory. They don't get what they want, so they want to tr provide a way to get more. That also takes down Cloud9 as they get in for some deep wards, and things start to crumble quickly as they start to get ahead and try to get themselves a lead. Yeah, they used everything on that mid lane. It's crumbling on the sides. Mm -hmm. No real deep vision, though, for Team Impulse. It's mostly defensive here. That's true. They're kind of working off a lot of what Cloud9 is trying to execute. They're getting it to work in their favor. Safety from Impulse is not usually what we see. It seems to be paying off a little bit here. Again, back into their own jungle. Try and guard their wards. This one, a futile attempt. Elimination able to take that one down. Okay, well, rush 202. Maokai's getting super tanky fairly quickly as well. Looking to get in there for a Righteous Glory combination next. Did have to get some magic resist for his lane versus Rumble, but they're looking like the dive buddies for Sneaky. They're getting ready pretty quickly. They want top lane to get pushed. They say Dragon 1 for the other team. Make no big thing. Let us see picks that one up for the team. No worries there, but they want to ha have Impact, rather, push this top lane so he can get everything yeah. off of that top turret. Start spreading the map a little bit. Cloud9 able to output some pressure, go for the objective off the recall of mid lane. Shao Shao goes back and they quickly jump on it. Okay. Evening up the Dragons is actually really big for Cloud9. They don't want Impulse to gain that lever in the right. middle of the map. They can just try and pull Cloud9 out into the open where the possibility of the Maokai TP flank and Sivir boost for the rest of the team enables Team Impulse to get to that back line and try and blow up Victor and Jinx. Very low mobility. So they finally get this lane pushed up. Ball says, no thank you. Equalizer right down the middle of the minion wave here. And it looks like Cloud9 could actually get a bit of an upper hand here in turrets. They already have two to one. They may make it three to one though. His impact is left guarding this by himself. Quick arcane smash Ooh. to do the trick, but he actually can't get to the minion wave. Takes more damage than he probably would have liked. You're just heading down to just the lens of yeah. here. They're gonna have to call down a few more resources. They do have one more at red buff. That should mean they're gonna back off as soon as they see the move from Oriana. And a wave was lost mid because of that move. So Cloud9 once again playing the map and the oh, pressure no. bottom results okay. in some missed CS Ooh. for Xiao Wei Xiao as they lure him down to the bottom side of the map. Even with Vision, uh, not going to go for that interrupt on Incarnation. He's level not 7 yet. Victor and not. junglers don't really like going aggressive on level, level 11 with laners. The possibility of that burst just too much. Pull a whoopsie. I think you got the kill on the guy backing. He was baiting you. Going to get a transfer over to Xiao Wei Xiao here in the mid lane. Still has that Ignite. Hasn't been able to go aggressive on Incarnation. After that first gank, he played, has played, very, very safe in the lane. And has kept the CS completely equal. That 15 minutes. We're at 17 now. Looks like we're going to try to get something in the mid lane. Maybe a ball control from Adrian. But Lemonation is also there for the counter. Pink Ward's pushed up here by Cloud9, definitely giving him the advantage. They know that Adrian just walked out, but he was still on the side. There is the Shockwave coming in. It's going to be a Chaos Storm kill onto Xiao Wei Xiao, but they still get the Retribution on Incarnation. Impact's taking quite a bit of damage as Rush comes in. A ding ding, a new challenger approaches, and they get the twisted advance onto Sneaky. That was the worry. No escape for the Jinx, and now a no escape for Lemon Nation. Rush coming up big as he connects the Sonic Wave, the resonating strike to boot, and he will not not follow through on the Medios, but they will get the middle turret here and finally open up this game. Yeah, Russian Apollo, the early response team there, Pop Silver Ultimate, an order to react for another similar play from Cloud9. That's what it looks like when those all-ins are turned around. We mentioned the possibility of that early yeah. and how devastating it can be if an Orianna gets to turn around a gank like yeah. that. 
landing the shockwave, and then Rush going in for a patented Lee Sin kickback on Sneaky, able to get that another, low mobility a, champion right one, into Kobe. the loving embrace of Maokai. Impulse working well off Cloud9 trying to engage. So, Xiao Wei Xiao, because he lives with, what, 300 health there, does get off the shockwave before going down. Right. Incarnation trades with him with the ultimate. Um, but because, oh, actually, it's a lot of tanking right around because of the Alistar ultimate yeah. as well. But again, Apollo Ooh. comes in flash to join the <laughs> with the flash boomerang blade and takes out Sneaky. What a pass there from Rush in over to Impact. Yeah. Right spot at the right time for that fight to occur, it seems, for Impulse. Everybody made the right moves to continue finishing off the cleanup kills. Put it in their favor now. 7-2. to two. Only took a few minutes for things to kind of go off the handle there. We were just talking about even CS in some of the lanes and an even game altogether. But that has spread it. Yeah. Minute 30 on the Dragon. Should be in favor of Impulse here if they can start to flex their muscles a little bit more. They have the warding for sure on that side of the map. It seems like Cloud9 wants to start getting a deny on the resources here on the top side, but also Vision to make sure nothing is snuck. A little too early for Baron just yet. Yeah, you can tell that Cloud9 have been pre-planning these combos mid that they want to pull off, but yeah, they gave away so much speed to Team Impulse, uh, and a team that really have had a lot of practice uh, with this type of squad. Mm -hmm. Able to pull off the response and get the counter the second time around. It's so risky for Cloud9 to opt for a uh, mid laner with, you know, no extra mobility in his kit and an AD carry that are going to be vulnerable to the high tempo dive style of Impulse. Still, Cloud9 have the option. Yep. Still have some tools in order to turn this around. But the vision now for Impulse is actually growing to be a problem here. Dragon 30 seconds and they've got plenty of it around the blue side buff jungle of Cloud9. They can see one of those plays coming now. Yeah. A pretty good amount of wards. They're just outside the range of Impulse's pink. So they have vision as the fight will start here, but it's not something that they really want to take right off the bat. Got to get a good equalizer down. And with that Sivir ultimate, everybody's going to be able to pretty much disengage it. Real hard. Lemonation's already tied twice. Can't talk. Tried twice to get himself in for the Flash Tibbers. Once it worked, once it did not. So they may be kind of hesitating on it again. Yeah, man. As we said, it's going to be like they, you can tell what they were planning picking this squad, but it's going to be hard to pull off. Yeah. One of the biggest things to counter Annie are really big, beefy front lines that just build full defense. Maokai and Alistar are two great examples of this, that they can try and interrupt her and zone her away from getting yeah. the perfect flash stun that she wants to do. Now that Impact does have Righteous Glory as well, they have to worry about contesting neutral objectives, opening themselves up you know, in the middle of the map. Very, very vulnerable, unless they're able to contain uh, the fighting into a small area. Looks uh, pretty good for yeah. Impulse here as far as the mid game goes. Fearless movement. That's got to be a scary thing for Cloud9. Impulse not really worrying, knowing they can set down wards without even being skirmished on. And they're the ones that want to start the fight. Sneaky in a bad spot. Unbreakable Wills taking the turret from the beginning oh, and oh. completely dunked as Sneaky. Balls is going to go down thinking he can actually assist. And the I think I can may continue to play through for Cloud9. They get right in the way of the shockwave. That's elimination. One more hit is Adrian in range. It's going to be the command oh. move coming in from Xiao Wei Zhao. Another kill. And somehow with one person under that inhibitor turret, four go down. Or rather, outer turret, four go down for Cloud9. Nine. Man, it's like Impulse just went into a candy store in <laughs> in the pick band phase, and they just got everything. No they way! Wanted. Oh, Medios looking to get a final push on oh. the wave. This is final really hard to watch, life. actually. Man, why indeed? <laughs> why indeed? I mean, they got Alistar to start off the dive. Everybody perfect follow-up. Oh, can he get one back? Nope. Riv, can he get one back? Riv! Oh, felt the breeze. <laughs> Riv, can he? Felt the breeze. Well, let's see how this started. One person is under this turret, and nobody's really in range to die. 
other than him. Adrian's happy to tank it up. Alps are ultimate, and they even want more after that. Impact with a secondary engage. He's full tank. He's sitting on the rumble equalizer the whole time and <laughs> taking the turret for the team. Got a hot foot. For the third re-engage from Adrian. Oh. Confident to push the mid lane mage right back next to his AD carry because they're so far ahead. <laughs> Here, have this. This is for you. Ouch. Take this. Run away. That's exactly what Cloud9 was thinking. Well, but they ran too. They tried to get the fight. Impact doing what he can to clear out this bottom wave. These guys have to be feeling good right now. I mentioned it, 15 minutes, the game was close. Yeah. We're seven minutes later, and now a 7,000 gold lead coming in for Team Impulse. A lot changed in a very short amount of time. So, items surplus now for Team Impulse. They have frozen hearts. The Lockets of the Iron Solari oh finish the want to engage even oh. more. And not even a chance to breathe or blink coming in from Cloud9. The connect here going on to Medios. The connect on to Sneaky. His, his mind's telling him, you know. But he doesn't yeah. do it. He does not do it. Cured of Elise Syndrome is Rush, and he heads to the team for the priority target for that priority objective of Baron. Oh, uh, yeah. And not only do they have, you know, vision, of course, but they obviously have control, so pretty easy pick up there for them. There's not much to say about the amount of control Impulse have over this game. I guess it wasn't really a candy store. It was an armory that they got to go into. And they pretty much picked up <laughs> bazookas for themselves. It's a candy armory. All right. Well, now they've got Baron on top of it. So they can also go into demolition mode and start taking down the rest of the turrets. And I got to say, if well, Impulse is still playing well, and Cloud9 has made some grave mistakes that hurt them this game. You got to see how much Sivir plays into Impulse's compositions. 207 already. They're in and out of any fights they don't want to be in or do want to be in whenever they want. At this point, they want in on any <laughs> Absolutely. Any ding, ding. Rush is ready. Rush calling these fights with the rest of the team. He had a pretty great early game. Kind of oh, he jumped up to 606 without me even really keeping track of the yep. last hits for him. Yep. Starting things off so the composition now can run in whatever they want in mid at the right spot at the right time. And him, uh, he has been banned out quite a bit towards jungler. Didn't want to play Lee Sin, went for the Nocturne yesterday. And it looks like he should have went for the Lee Sin. Apparently. Well, let's see what they do with it. They can just steamroll straight through these turrets. Adrian can tank them. Impact can tank them. <laughs> Rush fearless. Itching to make a play. They're as well. all fearless right now. Zanya is almost ready for Shao Shao. He'll get himself into right. some Lemon's more peculiar plank, positions. Though. Lemon's in position. This could uh, be good. I don't know. Don't waste too much on that guy. It's the bodyguard. That's still really good damage. It's going to be healed, but they can start that fight. Baron minions on the turret. All right, going to allow too much to Flash King for Sneaky! Absolutely dunked with the last auto attack from oh. Apollo! And now here comes on the hunt once again. In range as much as they need to be. One last hit to Lemon Nation. Rush gets the face of the mountain coming in from good guy Adrian. And it looks like they're still able to engage. Impact completely tanking that shredding inhibitor turret. Ball's now in the wrong spot at the wrong time. He's going to go down. They're going to be able to drop down Meteos. That's the ace for Impulse. 19-3. to 26 minutes in. They're inside Cloud. Nice base. What a massacre this game is. Team Impulse just shredding Cloud9. Impulse is all out of bubble gum. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it, man. All out of bubble gum right now. Holy moly. This is the team we saw last split, previous splits from Impulse, but it was from the get go. They would do these things from the start. It's taking a little bit longer now, but they can still produce that result they're finding. Whew. Yeah, breather. Take a breather. Painful. There. Yeah. All right, well, let's let's see how Rush got in there. Because he misses the Q, but he's like, I don't need that Q. <laughs> Ward hop into Flash. You're gone. Oh. That's one of the low mobility carries for Cloud9 out of the picture. But why stop there, Riv? What? <laughs> Inhibitor turrets? But they, there's more. They don't slow you down. For two easy flashes. In fact, he's not even really taking damage up from this inhibitor turret. The only thing that causes a member of Impulse to die is because when you use the Twisted Advance for impact, he loses tower aggro because he becomes untargetable. So it swaps back onto Adrian and they get one kill for Cloud9. Becomes a thing well, that's it. 
still trying to claw their way back in, as we said in the pregame, and doing it in this game. Impulse has pretty much kicked the ladder away from the roof at this point. Yeah. Cloud9's going to have a tough time finding their way back to the top and, in this game. And Just we are about 40,000 to 53,000 right now. We are past the halfway mark now for Cloud9. Oh boy! As well, as far as he's There's the on the hunt there. right onto Incarnation again. There's no escape for him or Sneaky in these fights, and they continuously go down very quick. Balls looks to get the first loss on his professional rumble career as Impulse makes their way into the base. Almost another ace as Sneaky's in the bottom lane, not even present for the fight as Cloud9 is looking to squeak out a few more objectives on the map. Well, he's, get, he's got an inhibitor, he's turn, gonna get but it. it's going to cost him a Nexus. There's a hashtag worth here, <laughs> at least for Sneaky. The team is on to the Nexus for Impulse. Cloud9 looking to get... Another loss in the record book oh. here. Just under 30 minutes, 24 to three. As Impulse turned it on, they're able to take down Cloud9 and go 2-0 on the split against them. One of the most brutal beatings that we've seen this split. That's the team that doesn't let go, that's not okay with having a little bit of a lead. That's a team that wants more of a lead consistently. And it's an Impulse we haven't seen for quite some time. It really is. It really is now. <laughs> Few fights that are really reminiscent of Cloud9's past and trying to get back into something, but that call just escalated the game out of control so quickly, and it happened twice in a row in this game. The engages in the bottom side of the jungle, Tip was able to control and turn in their favor. The engage in mid, Tip was able to control and turn in their favor. After those two fights, Tip made the fights in their favor. They manifested everything from there on out. I, I just, I don't think you can give Impulse that much of a speed advantage. No. In the overall team. If you, if you give them that mobility, then they are gonna create those plays across the map. And if, you know, one step goes wrong in this sort of sniper combo that Cloud9 yeah. wanted to pull off with the Nocturne, Jinx, Annie, and Victor all mid to take down one target. Mm -hmm. If one thing goes wrong in that plan and you get turned on one time, you're left with nothing. Yeah. They have, there's no backup plan there. And uh, both your carries it be very vulnerable targets. The composition that Impulse brought to the table worked, and the statistics show it. Maokai did more damage, not combined, but more damage than both Incarnation and Sneaky on the scoreboard. So your carries weren't able to beat out the top laner, meaning the Impulse's composition was on the right targets at the right time, and Cloud9 couldn't find a way through those fights. Nope. <laughs> they, couldn't, they couldn't find a way away from the fights either. Yeah, that too. <laughs> the disengage of speed or the re-engage for Impulse, able to bring them into another win. Now 5-5 five and five on the split going to help them out quite a bit and moving them up a little. Maybe he's tied with somebody else today as they still have, we still have more games to play. CLG TSM coming up next and we've already had some crazy games. I hope this one provides. Well. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be pretty fun to watch. Always does uh, encourage the fans. <laughs> CLG I think TSM. they've been encouraged enough today. We've got a pretty <laughs> rowdy crowd in here, so it's going to be amazing for the next game. Make sure you're tuned in for that one, but right now we're going to throw it over to the analyst desk for more on tips. Decide